Hey fam, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna talk about breeding in Pega and I made a little financial model for you guys. So you can go ahead and grab that for free and play with it if you want. Now let me just say, this is not sponsored by Pega at all. I have some other sponsored stuff later in the video, but we'll get to that. And Axie versus Pega has been a big thing lately. There's things I like and dislike about both Pega and Axie. I'm playing both, you guys can do whatever you want. If you don't wanna watch this video, you don't have to. I'm just trying to help people out there. And the other thing is I'm not trying to hype up Pega. I think the price has soared today. It's been going up and up and the market's been a little bit crazy. So I just want you guys to be careful. If you've done your research, if you've looked at Pega and if it makes sense to you, or if this model helps you figure that out, like use these tools I'm giving you, but I'm not trying to pump up Pega. It's just something that I'm interested in, something that I'm investing in. And I wanna share with you guys some tools that you can use when evaluating these projects. So here's the model I'm gonna share with you guys. There will be a link down in the description and you can go ahead and just click file and download this to an Excel sheet or this is Google Sheets this time so you can add it to yourself and you can play with this. Mostly what you wanna do is edit the numbers in here. We're gonna talk all about this in a minute. If you just wanna see that, go ahead and jump to the timestamps down in the description. But first I do wanna show you some basics on Pega and some things you should know and some assumptions you should know about breeding in Pega. And first of all, obviously this is on the Polygon network. So make sure you guys do research on that if this is your first introduction to Pega. This is in the white paper. You can find this from their website. Basically, here's where I got most of the numbers, right? These are the costs for breeding. And this VIS cost is doubled because this is per parent, but PGX is per breed, right? Very similar to SLP and AXS, right? And then the other key things you need to know are how bloodlines and breed types work. And basically for racing, you need to know that legendary is like collectible. For breeding, for profitability, all you really need to care about is getting pacers, right? These other things are for collectability and they might give you special perks like early access to the beta and stuff like that. But this table down here is what's most useful. The reason hauses are the most popular is because their cooldown for breeding is 24 hours, right? And after 24 hours, they can also race, meaning they can earn viz or PGX after 24 hours. And then it goes down from here. And then anything that you breed, or if you buy it right away and someone has just bred this Axie, you or sorry, this Pega, you cannot do anything with it for four days, right? And this applies to all of these. And I'm also bringing this up because Corey, Corey's the co-founder, by the way, great guy. I've had a chance to talk with him. If you guys um, haven't seen this, go take a look. They're proposing a bit of a change to this where Zons will be able to race faster, but Hauses will be able to breed faster. And I've accounted for this in the model in a second tab here. We'll talk about that in a second, but it's something key you need to know. And you need to know that you need a male and a female to breed, but it doesn't matter their relation. So parents can breed with children, children can breed with cousins. There's none of the complex things like there are in Axie as far as who can breed together. Instead, they use this system of cooldown where you can't just breed three, four times in a row. You have to wait the 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours to breed depending on which bloodline you have, right? And that's where this also comes into effect. So if you are breeding a Haas and a Haas, you'll get a Haas. But if you breed a Haas with a Camponia, you'll get a Camponia. So that's also key to keep in mind if you're doing other things with the breeding, these bloodlines affect them. And if for some reason you're going for the um, collectibles, the legendary, this is the same thing, right? You need two founders to get a legendary and it keeps going down to legendaries make an epic. That's how the founders are most collectible. Anyways, we're not worrying about that here. Everything I'm gonna talk about is Pacer and everything for this video I'm gonna talk about is for Haas. Now, I'm gonna walk you guys all through this financial model, this breeding chart and tell you how it works. But first I am gonna give you a sponsored message. Now today's video is sponsored by Affin. So if you guys are interested in this, keep in mind, this is sponsored. So go out, do your own research, check out their website, check out their white paper, their discord, and see if this is something you're also interested in. The reason I accepted these guys as a sponsor is because they have some stuff in the white paper that I quite agree with. Some things about the play to earn economy, some of the problems we're seeing in games like Axie Infinity that I really liked. Now, Affin is a play to earn metaverse, essentially that's gonna be free to play. And you can kind of think of it like Pokemon Go on steroids. In the fact that they're geolocation play to earn and they're trying to use real world token utility, right? And they talk about these problems in the current ecosystem of games in the NFT space. And they go on in the white paper. If you take a look, they talk about how it's unsustainable, how the funds are going one way. They outline the supply and the demand problems. And I don't agree with everything they say in here, but they've identified a lot of problems in the economy and they're coming up with solutions that might fix this, right? Their solution to having real world utility is clever and I like what they're trying to do. And it works on this world, this virtual world of Nexus with these buddies being your NFT and they have virtual land, campaigns, quests, etc. 
This is just the pitch deck. You can go ahead and look through this yourself. Another thing I like about this project, the team is transparent and experienced. They have lots of experience running companies and lots of experience in the blockchain side of things as well, which is great to see. So far, they've raised about $18 million. On the roadmap for this month into February, they're unveiling more of the Buddy NFTs and in just a few days on January 29th, the Affin token is going to be listed on several exchanges. So if you guys do some research, there's an opportunity to buy the token very soon. Like I said, jump in their Discord, ask questions, check out the white paper, check out the pitch deck, and see if this is something that's interesting to you as well. Back to the financial model, you guys can go ahead and you can download this. There's a Google link down in the description and play with this. You can edit the prices here for VIS, PGX, and the floor price of Haas Pacers, because these three are all gonna change all the time. And you can find the floor prices at apollo.pegaxi.io. You just scroll down and at the bottom here, you can change the filter to be zero breeds and you can see what the floor prices are for Haas. Pacer's the cheapest, so that doesn't matter. But this comes in from the white paper. It takes the cost. Now keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor and there could be mistakes in this. So use it at your own risk. It's not meant to be financial advice. This is just a tool for you to play with that I thought I would give out to people for free. Let's talk about how this works. There are two tabs here, right? One is the current situation and this other tab is the Haas change tab. So if Haas's are able to race a little bit less, they're not able to race as fast as Corey suggested might be a change, then this second tab will work for that. So. Once again, there could be mistakes, but take a look at this. These are the prices. You guys can adjust my assumptions. This is the cost table, right? If you ever need to adjust this, you can come in here and adjust this too. But basically this is the breeding model, right? And this is a six day cycle. And the reason it's a six day cycle is based on this here. And the idea is you breed three times, you sell one of them, and then you start breeding again, and you race as much as possible in order to earn PGX. My model is based on earning PGX. So when you go in the marketplace and you rent a Haas, you can see here, some of them rent out for PGX and about 60 tends to be the number right now. But once again, if this number changes, you can go ahead and edit that as well. You start on day zero and from henceforth, you do a six day cycle, right? And basically this is the approximate cost of buying two horses right now. So you need $4,200 to get going. And then you're gonna need another $3,382 for all your breeds. So altogether, you're looking at almost $8,000 like to get started on this with two Haas virgins and get going. And it's a big investment. This might help you figure out how it's gonna work out for you. Now, here are the actions you need to do, right? So you start on day zero, two virgin parents. And then as it stands right now, on the next day, you can start these horses racing and you can start earning either this or PGX right away. If you're gonna do this, you'll need to adjust some in here. But like I said, I've done the model for if you're renting them out for a set amount of PGX. There are a few reasons for that. One of them is this works on a one day cycle. You can rent them out for one day and then you can breed them the next day if you need to. And then you could rent them out again. And then you take them back in 24 hours, breed them, rent them out again, etc. right? Rather than the this schedule working on the person who's renting it, this forces them to work more on your schedule, which is one of the benefits of doing PGX. But once again, sometimes you can earn more renting in this. That's up to you guys. But the general principle is the same. You wait two days after the parents are bought because most of the horses you're gonna buy are right here on this 96 hour. So you're gonna to have to wait 96 hours before you can start breeding them when you buy them as virgins. So that's what this is accounting for. And then you do the first breed on day number four, which is technically the fifth day because I have this day zero for the first week only, the day you buy the horses on doesn't count. So then on day four, you do your first breed, right? And then the next day you can do your second breed and you can race the horse you bred the day before. Same with the third day. You can race the horse you bred the day before, you can do your third breed, and then you can sell your third breed and you can sell ma by males and females, right? Because when you start the cycle again, back at day one, you need one female and one male. So if you breed three males, sell two of them and buy back a female. If you, sell, if you breed two males and a female, obviously sell the male. And the reason this cycle starts again is because I don't know if your breed one, two, three is gonna be the one you sell. If for some reason you were to breed a male right away and a female right away, you can cut this cycle down one day shorter. You can get your ROI a little bit faster. So sometimes you're gonna be able to do this in a five day cycle, but for safety, you can assume that it's gonna be a six day cycle. And there may be some fees in selling a male and buying a female sometimes, which is also gonna cut into your profit, which is why I think on average, looking at like a six day cycle is a good idea. And then of course you have the PGX earned, which is based on a 60 per day. 
and you can see this here, and then you can see this here, and that's if you sold the PGX at the current price, these are the revenue you're getting for that, right? This is the revenue you're getting for selling the horse, and these are the costs of breeding coming from this table here. And then you go down to the financial model, and this is on the assumption of you're doing this every week. And now these aren't true weeks. I put week in here for convenience, but these are actually six day cycles, right? So this is six, six day cycles. This is not six full weeks. But if you look at it like you take Sunday off, you could look at this as weeks too, up to you. Now, Essentially, what this is saying is it's counting the number of races you do, which is giving you PGX. It's counting the revenue and the cost, and it's telling you your account balance, right? So right away, when you buy the first two horses in the first week, you're going to be down four grand. Then you're going to spend, you're going to need this $3,000, 300 up front, because you're going to spend this in the first week doing the breeding. And this is what you're going to be down after you do some earnings and you sell that first horse at the end of the first week, at the end of the six day cycle, you're gonna be down almost $5,000. But as you get more horses, right? And as you expand, you can see the number of pegas is going up by two each week because we're breeding three and we're selling one. If you breed a fourth time, you're losing money. Don't do it unless you think um, this thing's gonna explode and you think you'll get your money back later. But basically you wanna do three breeds for most of the horses. I'm talking about hauses, right? If you're looking at other horses, you might wanna do less or more breeds. The PGX you earn is going to be going up and up as the horses and the number of races you can do goes up and up. That is how this works. So essentially by the end of the seventh week, you will have a positive balance of $1,800 in your bank account. Right? So essentially in under seven weeks, in under seven, six day cycles, you will get all your money back. Now, let's say if this proposed change to hauses go through, it's essentially gonna change these numbers here, which is gonna affect the number of races you can do and the number of PGX you can earn. And so what I did is I quickly changed that here and I think this is right, but we'll have to see this change might not go exactly as Corey said either, which means I'll need to update this, but I'll try my best to keep it up to date for people who are watching this later. And essentially it changes the number of races you can do, right? Because you can no longer um, race the breeds right away. You have to wait a little while to begin the race. Okay, I quickly removed the racing bit from this because this is no longer correct. If this goes through, the first breed cannot race the next day, which is why the parents don't start racing right away either. They start racing when they start breeding. And so in a week by week, you have less races, right? And what that does is instead of getting your money back in seven six day cycles, you will get your money back according to my calculator, which could have mistakes in eight six day cycles, you'll actually be up $1,600, right? So it pushes you back one week, one six day cycle. So for me, this isn't really a big deal, but it does affect the amount you can earn. So I understand why Corey puts it this way. And he talks about the fact that this is going to affect some people's ROI and stuff. And honestly, I like this change. I don't see any problem with it. I think it does solve a good, I think it addresses a good problem that there are too many hauses and not enough of the other horses. So take a look at this, play with it, do whatever you want. Um, just don't claim it's yours. <laughs> That's all. I ask you, give me credit. And like I said, this is for hauses. One more thing before I close off this video, I'm going to tell you guys what I'm doing right now, just because you guys might find this interested. Um, this is like super degen and going to make things more complicated, but for me, it makes sense. So maybe it'll make sense for you. What I've done is I've taken some Ethereum and I've wrapped it onto the Polygon network and I've deposited it into a protocol called Aave. This is one of the biggest money markets there is out there. Um, you can see their total market size. They are on multiple chains, but I'm talking about the Polygon chain. So this is quite a trusted protocol, but make sure you do your own research. And what I've done is I've stuck some Ethereum in here. And what that does is it means it's getting interest, right? They're paying me interest for loaning the money. And then what I'm doing is I'm borrowing the UST I'm using for Pega. And it costs me 4% to borrow this, but Aave is giving me 5% in Matic tokens, right? Now, there's a few reasons I'm doing this. One, I'm getting paid to loan and borrow, right? As long as you have enough, you can get paid to borrow money, which is great. I'm also getting rewards in Matic, which I'm gonna need for gas. You don't need very much, but you are gonna need some for gas. And then also, because the market is down, right? Because of what Ethereum has done lately, we're way down here. Now, could Ethereum go up? Yes. Could it go down? Yes, absolutely. But I am of the opinion that if I hold this Ethereum for the next year or two years, we are gonna see the Ethereum go back up. I am fairly confident that my price of Ethereum is gonna double over the next several years. Now, if my horses do not double, if my horses become worthless because Pega dies, like I said, high risk game, who knows what's gonna happen, you could lose all your money. But for me, if I lose all my money, but I still have my Ethereum here, if my price of Ethereum doubles, 
my collateral has doubled, my borrow amount stays the same, plus the interest, and I've actually wiped out my losses from Pega because Ethereum doubled, right? Now there are holes with this and it's a little bit complicated, but that's the general idea. I'm getting paid to borrow, I'm getting paid to loan, I'm getting, I'm covering my ass because I think Ethereum's gonna go up and I'm not as sure about Pega, and I think it's a good time to buy Ethereum with the price being so low, right? That's how I'm doing this. You guys can look at strategies like this. I'm just mentioning it. This is where I have a lot of fun combining DeFi and NFT games. And so if you guys are interested in this kind of thing, let me know because I can make more videos about this too. One last thing, if you're gonna do this, keep in mind you can be liquidated, right? You heard this term before, but you might not know what it means if you're new to money markets and DeFi, but you're only allowed to borrow 80%, maximum 82% of your Ethereum to USD, right? So what I've done is I've put enough Ethereum in here that if my Ethereum goes down to $1,800, I will not get liquidated. So I'm playing it fairly safe, right? Now you need to do these calculations. You need to understand liquidation before you jump into something like this. But once again, I can make videos. I know there's lots of support of at Ethereum at $1,800. So I think if we get down there, it should give me plenty of time to add more collateral into Aave to cover my ass so I don't get liquidated. That's my strategy for Pega relating it to DeFi. If any of this was interesting, or if you find this model useful, please let me know. It's great when you guys comment, like, subscribe, all that great stuff. And I will see you very soon with more content for NFT gaming and the metaverse.